So how does that impact you then? Because even though you function normally, uh, you'd be classed as having a hidden disability. Does that mean that you now need to use the disabled toilets? And is there anything different that you need to do to somebody else who would be using the facilities? Yes. So since 2006, sorry, 2017, I've used the disabled toilet. So during my ostomy journey, when I had an ostomy, but then also after. So for me, I can't pass wind normally, so it builds up in my system. And as you can imagine, if I went into a normal cubicle and passed all that wind while emptying my bowels, you would get a lot of sniggers or a lot of people talking about it. So for me, I don't feel comfortable using a normal toilet. So I'll go and use the disabled toilet. So I've got that privacy that I need. But for people with medical devices like stomas, they will need the facilities such as a sink to change their bag or clean themselves up. And do you find that people kind of look on you as if you've just come out of the disabled toilet? If there's somebody who's queuing up who's actually disabled, might be queuing up and physically disabled, what a disability that isn't hidden, do you get much of a sort of response from people who are disabled or do you find it actually tends to be the general public who, who, come, who, who may give you some looks for using those facilities? I'd say it's a bit of both. The disabled community are more understanding, but I have had an incident with a disabled lady in a wheelchair. When I have came out of the disabled toilet, she started an argument saying I have no right to use it, even when I've explained my condition of having an ostomy. Oh, so, oh dear. I mean, did she not, when you explained to her, surely she would have understood and had a bit more, you know, a bit more empathy with you when you explained that to her. Was that not how she responded? Unfortunately not, but you, it's, that's a rarity. You do get a lot of the disabled community fully understanding that you've got these conditions. I was, my ostomy bag was full. It was about to burst. So I was in the cinema at the time. I didn't exactly want feces over me, which is why I had to go to the disabled toilet. Mm. Well, listen, you're, you're an incredible, incredible woman. Um, talk to me now about your campaigning then for um, hidden disabilities and how you're sort of getting the message across that even if people look perfectly fine, they may well have something that is hidden. Yeah, so I think for me, um, so after my stoma surgery, I was actually suicidal for six months. I didn't want to live because there was no representation in the media. There is high beauty standards that shouldn't be there. And I wanted that to change for others. We, we're not alone. There are a lot of people with ostomy bags. There are a lot of people with medical devices. But there is a lack of education out there for hidden disabilities. So when you ask someone, what does disabled look like? They say someone in a wheelchair, someone with a medical aid, but that's actually incorrect. So that, that needs to change, that stigma. So from that, I thought, what could I do? I decided to create a poster and an image that highlights these hidden conditions that can't be seen to visualize it because there's around 65% of people are visual learners. They have to see something to know it's there. So from that, I've started to create merchandise that I raise money for charity and also projects like empowerment photo shoots and a warrior charity pageant. Well, listen, Jessica, you're an absolute superstar. If people want to uh, support you on your campaign, is there a website or somewhere they can go to find out more about you and what you're doing? Yes, so the website is called www.makingtheinvisiblevisible.org.uk.